upset, brought charges against them, and had them put in jail. The Bible said they were beaten in their backs for doing the right thing. And after being beaten in their backs, the Bible said that the jailer, having received a charge, thrust them. Thrust. Talking about police brutality. Threw them down the stairs into the inner prison. What's the inner prison? The dungeon. Now, I can imagine what the dungeon was like. It probably smelled bad down there. It probably had bugs. You know, I can't stand spiders. <laughs> probably had spiders down there. You ain't said nothing. Oh, I can't stand spiders. You know, a spider got eight legs, and a spider got eight eyes. Did y'all know that? Little weakly things. And yet they're down there. Roaches down in that dungeon. Chained to the wall. Even if a spider jumped on them, they couldn't get the spider off because they were chained to the wall. And the Bible said in the midnight hour, the darkest hour of the night, what did they do? They began to sing and pray and give God praise. And brothers and sisters, I dare you to start singing and giving God praise in the midst of your struggle. Because when you start praising God, as I said before, praise. Everybody open your mouth and say praise. praise. Come on, open your mouth and shout praise. praise. Praise is an invitation to the presence of God. When we pray, we invite God's presence in. And it doesn't matter where you are. You can be in the darkest of places. You can be in the most troublesome places. But when you give God praise, praise is an invitation to the presence of God. And when they prayed in the midnight hour in the jail, in the midst of the roaches and the spiders and the rats in a bad spelling place, when they prayed, the Bible said that suddenly there was an earthquake. <clears throat> in other words, God brought power and deliverance in the midst of jail. Sometimes we feel like the only place we can praise God is in the church. Now let me say this to you, and I'm going to move on. But listen. Praise is a part of the sanctuary. But would you believe me if I told you that praise is not exclusive for the sanctuary? In other words, after we leave here, we can keep on praising God. You can praise God in your car. You can praise God in your house. You can praise God in your private time. But whenever we praise God, we invite God's presence to where you are. And sometimes we need God in the midst of what we're going through. Sometimes we need the presence of God in the midst of the trial that we face. So I'm praising God on my job. I'm praising God in my house. Why? Because there's trouble. There's situations there. There's tension. But praise is an invitation to the presence of God. And therefore, I'm going to praise God. And the Bible declared when these people came together and began to pray, that the Bible said that God sent a shaking to where they were. And some of us, how many of you know, we need a shaking. We need God to shake our circumstance. We need God to shake our foundation. We need God to shake what we're going through. Send a shaking as a result of praise. And notice their prayer. Notice their prayer. God give us boldness. You know, that's what I want to talk about, really. And I never got to that, but that's really what I was going to talk about. The boldness of the people of God. Because the people now have gotten bold. They're coming out of everything. So my folk coming out the closet. They ain't just coming out the closet now. Folk coming out the basement. You ain't saying nothing. Folk, folk coming out the attic. You ain't saying nothing. Folk, folk, my God, folk done went and came out the garage. I mean, folk come out of everything. And I'm not just talking about homosexuals. I'm talking about everything. People are coming out with everything. I was looking at something uh, on television a couple of weeks ago when the abortion issue began to come up and resurface. And, 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 and these two young ladies were in a church, and they got up in the church. I don't know if any of y'all saw this. Got up in the church and stripped to their underwear during church. Stripped to their underwear, two women in church, and said, this is my body. I get to do what I want. Well, my God, that's, that's some crazy kind of bowl to get up in church and strip to your underwear just to make a point. But what am I saying? This is the boldness that is coming to the world today. And the Bible said, or, or, or the word bold means to show an ability to take risk. It means competent, courageous, or daring. And this is what God wants out of the church. Again, notice what they prayed. Lord, give us more boldness. In other words, give us the ability to take risks. Give us the confidence and the courageous 
boldness and daring spirit and attitude that we might stand forth and preach and declare thy word in spite of the persecution, in spite of the things that we're going through, in spite of the things that we're facing. God, give us boldness in this day and time because certainly if the world has gotten bold, the people of God need to get bold. As I said before, look like people are coming out the closet, but look like the church is backing up in the closet. We're not saying anything. We're not challenging anything. We don't have gospel preachers now. We just got motivational speakers. But I'm here to tell you we need to stand on God's word because when the deal goes down, heaven and earth will pass away, but his word will stand forever. And if we can stand on God's word, we can stand forever. If we stand on God's word, I'm going to stand forever. Why? Because the word will never fail. Come on, lift your voice and say hallelujah. If you notice something about the boldness, now again, notice what they prayed. Lord, give us more boldness than in the midst of persecution, in the midst of struggle, in the midst of what we're going through, in the midst of what we're dealing with. God, give us boldness that we might keep on preaching. Regardless of the persecution, regardless of being ridiculed and made fun of, regardless of being talked about and trying to be suppressed, Lord, give us that boldness that we might continue to stand, that we might continue to preach, that we might not compromise that we might stand on your word. If you notice why they prayed that was because on the day of Pentecost when they were filled with the Holy Ghost if you notice what the Holy Ghost did the first action of the Holy Ghost was to take them into the streets and when they went out into the streets speaking in tongues the Bible said that the people began to mock and make fun these men are full of new wine but Peter stood up the same Peter that denied Jesus the same Peter that denied he knew who Jesus was now he stands up because he's got the power of the Holy Ghost in his life he stands up and declared we're not we're not drunk as you suppose but this is that that was spoken of by the prophet Joel in the last days said God I pour out my spirit upon all flesh your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy your old men are going to see visions and your young men are going to dream dreams the Bible said that when Peter preached 3,000 souls got baptized I believe in a day and time like this uh, God wants to raise a people uh, that would be bold in his word uh, I believe in a day and time like this uh, God wants to raise up a church uh, that would be bold uh, and declare the word of God uh, I believe in a day and time like this uh, God is saying I want to raise up people uh, that are full of the Holy Ghost uh, I want to raise up a church uh, that's full of the power uh, I want to raise up a church uh, that will declare his word. Uh, I'm not going to compromise. Uh, I'm not going to back down. Uh, I'm not trying to win a popularity contest, uh, but I'm declaring his word uh, that Jesus uh, is the only way. Uh, that Jesus uh, is the only hope. Uh, it ain't in Buddha. Uh, it ain't in Mohammed. Uh, it ain't in Confucius. Uh, but Jesus Come on, lift your voice and say, Jesus, Jesus, he is the only way, Jesus, he's the only deliverer, Jesus, power in his name, and the Bible said, as I began to bring this to a close, the Bible said that when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, wait a minute, brother preacher, weren't they filled with the Holy Ghost already? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. But then they came back and God filled them again. I'm convinced what we need to do is come back to the altar and say, God, fill us again. Fill us again with your power. Fill us again with your anointing. Fill us again with your word. Fill us again with your spirit. Give us boldness. Give us boldness uh, to tell the gospel story. Uh, give us boldness uh, to tell a dying world uh, that Jesus uh, is the only way. Give us that power. Uh, come on, lift your hand and say, Lord, uh, fill us again with the Holy Ghost. Uh, fill us again with your power.
power. Fill us again. Come on, say, fill us again. Fill us again. We need it every day. We need it every hour. Every hour. I need his anointing. Every day. I need his power. Shout yes. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. We need the Holy Ghost. We need his anointing. Say yes. Come on and praise him, everybody. Hallelujah. And the Bible said, when they were dealing with the Holy Ghost, they went back out and kept on preaching. Persecuted, but kept on preaching. Threatened, but kept on preaching. Mocked, but kept on preaching. Lied on, but kept on preaching. And that's what God wants out of the church. We backed up. We backed down. We compromised. We got quiet. But God said, I need a people that would stand tall. I need a people that would rise up. Hallelujah. I need a people that would come to the altar and say, God, fill me. And after you fill me, fill me again. And when you feel me, feel me again. But every now and then I'm coming back to the altar saying, God, feel me again. Hallelujah. Reverend, I got filled. The Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost back in 1982. And you ain't had a refill since? Listen, when I came here yesterday, I had to put gas in my tank to make the journey from Bellwood, Illinois to Kokomo, Indiana. But you know what? When I go back home, I got to get some more gas. You know why? Because when you use what's in you, after a while, you need some more. And when the Lord is using you, and especially when the Lord is using you, you need some more. Say amen. amen. You need some more. You need some more anointing. Reverend, the Lord anointed me. Well, have you, if you've been being used, if you're being used by God in the anointing, you need some more anointing. Reverend, the Lord didn't fill me with the spirit of the Lord, and I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm glad. That's good. But when the Lord is using you, you're going to need some more spirit. You're going to need some more Holy Ghost. Somebody say amen. Stand on your feet. Everyone standing. And, uh, you know, that's what I wanted to talk about today. I kind of got off, I know. It happens sometimes. But the boldness of the first century church. You know why the gospel spread the way it did? Because of the boldness of the church. They went everywhere preaching. And the Bible said this. The Bible said this. That when there was persecution, the eighth chapter, and all the time say this, that Acts 1 and 8 was not really starting to come to fruition until Acts 8 and 1. What do you mean by that, brother preacher? I mean Acts 1 and 8, ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. Why did God fill us with the Holy Ghost? So we can shout better? So we can speak in tongues? Why did God fill us with the Holy Ghost? So we can be witnesses. I told the folk this the other day. This is why we need the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is the witness to the scriptures. The Holy Ghost is the witness to what the Bible said. You know, I wasn't there, and neither were you, when Jesus walked the earth 30, three and a half years, 2,000 years ago. I wasn't there. I didn't see Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. I, I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I wasn't there when they crucified him. Didn't see that. Didn't see Oh, I seen it on, seen dramatizations. I seen movie Hollywood try to do it, but I wasn't there. 
You weren't there. I wasn't there when Jesus resurrected again on the third day. Well, now, how can you talk about and testify? Because the Holy Ghost was there. Somebody say amen. amen. The Holy Ghost was there. And because the Holy Ghost was there, the Holy Ghost is the witness to what the scripture said. And so why do we need to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Because the Holy Ghost is a witness. And you shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem, Judea, such as Judea, and all of the other most parts of the earth. That's what the Bible said. Power after the Holy Ghost has come. And you shall be witnesses. That's Acts 1 and 8. But you know the problem with the early church is the problem that's have a lot of churches today. The church had become rich. First century church. Listen to me what I'm telling you. The church was growing. They started a church with 3,000 folk. Can you imagine? Some of us never passed a 3,000 folk in our entire life with folk coming and going and coming. And yet this church started with 3,000 souls. And the church was rich because the Bible said the people sold their possessions and brought the money and laid at the apostles' feet. Now, you know, if you had 3,000 folk, if, if, if half them folk would pay tithes, you'd have a rich church. Now, I don't know how many of those folk were selling their possessions. Some folk even lied about it, and they fell dead. I ain't going to go into that. But if half them folk did that, the church would be rich. A church started with 3,000 folk. And then the Bible said this, the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be seen. So you start now with 3,000 folk, and folks still coming in daily. Why? Because the early church was bold. But see, here's the problem that happened with the first century church. They were not going into all the world <coughs> because everything is going on here in Jerusalem. They weren't going. Who's that boy? Oh, he ain't coming out there. Somebody say amen. You know, they weren't going all over the world because everything is happening in Jerusalem. Everything is booming in Jerusalem. The Lord is blessed in Jerusalem. We ain't going nowhere because everybody, the Lord is blessing over here. This Holy Ghost headquarters over here. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost, come over here. You want to be saved, come over here. And that's not what the Lord told the first church to do. He said, you go into the world. Don't wait on the folk to come to you. And you know, brothers and sisters, you know what often can, can keep our churches from growing? Because we want everybody to come here. We've been praying, Lord, send them in. Lord, send them in. The Lord said, no, you go out. Y'all ain't talking to me. Lord, send in the rich folk. Lord, send us some millionaires. Lord, send, you may be surprised. You may go out. You may get ones. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing. When God has sent us all kind of stuff, God said, go out. Well, Jerusalem wasn't going out. The first church, everything was happening in Jerusalem. So here comes Acts 8 and 1. Now, remember what I said. Acts 1 and 8 was not starting to take place until Acts 8 and 1. What happened in Acts, Acts 81? The Bible said there was great persecution against the church. And they began to scatter. They began to run. You know, it's something about mega churches. And I'm not saying this in a negative sense. Please don't get me wrong. But you look at the pattern. Sooner or later something happens and breaks it all up. Scandal breaks out. Sometimes people can have mega ministry. But look like somewhere along the way, a, a scandal breaks out. Or something breaks out. Messes it up. You know why? Because sometimes God said, I got to break it up because you made a utopia within yourself. You made a utopia with your name. And the people are not hearing me. All they're hearing. And then when you look at folk like that, you know what happens? They start to compromise. They start to compromise. They're not going to preach against the homosexual. They're not going to preach against folks shacking up and living together. They're not going to preach against folks telling lies. They're not going to preach. They're going to be friends with the politicians. They're going to hook up with the world. They're going to be friends with the entertainers of the world. You know why? Because they've compromised. See, a man that's, you know, making a ton of money on his books and CDs and all that, he don't want to lose that income, so he's not going to talk about certain stuff. I mean, you, you check it out. And again, I'm not saying this in a negative sense. I'm just saying check it out for yourself. Most of your high-profile preachers, all they preach are what I call safe sermons. 
They ain't going to hit on nothing. They ain't going to talk about nothing. They ain't going to preach against nothing. You know, they're trying to be friends with the celebrities and the entertainers and the folks that got money. You know why? Because somewhere along the way, we compromise. And that's why I'm praying, Lord, I don't care where you take me, how high I may or may not go. Don't let me compromise your word. That's the way I feel. Don't let me compromise your word. If going that high is going to make me compromise, I don't need to go. Let me stay right where I am. But don't let me compromise your word. Those heads are bowed. Those eyes are closed. The Lord is in this place. The Lord is in this place. Lord, grant thy servant more boldness. Grant thy people more boldness that we might testify to the world about what Jesus has done for me. That we might tell a dying world that Jesus is the only way. Hallelujah. God said, I want to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I want to fill you with the Holy Ghost. I want to ask everybody to lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands in this place and say, Lord, fill me again with the Holy Ghost. Fill me again with the anointing. Fill me, Lord, with the boldness that I might stand up and be a witness for you any and everywhere I go. Come on, say it. Any and everywhere I go. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise in this house. Come on, let's bless the Lord in this house. Come on, open your mouth and praise him. God fill us, God fill us. Come on, you're not praising him. Don't pity Pat. Open your mouth, open your mouth. Because praise is an invitation to the presence of God. I want God to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Come on, praise him. Come on, praise him. Come on, y'all. Come on. Ain't y'all sanctified? Ain't y'all holy? Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, fill us with the Holy Ghost. How about my shot? Hallelujah. Fill us with the Holy Ghost. Bless be the name of the Lord. Bless be the name of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, put your hands together. Everybody, everybody. Everybody, everybody, put your hands together. Everybody, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Those heads are bowed, those eyes are closed. Anybody blessed by the word today? I'm just curious to know. Anybody blessed? I'm just curious to know. Hallelujah. Boldness. I want to pray this morning. And I'm believing God for healing. But I'll tell you what I want to pray for. And listen to me, I'll tell you this. I don't mean to embarrass anybody. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to ask you your business. But you know, sometimes folk can suffer with heartbreak. And sometimes heartbreak can follow you. You know, you just look like you can, you can, you can hit a ceiling. I remember I saw a, 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 a play years ago. And it's just a play, it's just an illustration. But in the play, the young lady had a box that she couldn't get away from. And when she would get in the bed at night, the box would be in the bed with her. And when she'd get on the bus to go to work the next day, the box would be with her. And when she'd go to work, the box, it was symbolic of something that she just couldn't get rid of. And it got in the way. Sometimes she tripped over the box. One particular time, uh, she wanted to get a promotion on the job, and she was ready to go for the interview, but she couldn't get out of her space because the box was in the way. Somebody said, well, Reverend, that, what, what did that mean? It was symbolic of things that we can carry that we don't need to carry. 
but sometimes can trip us, sometimes can get in the way, sometimes hinder us. And you know, sometimes people, they're carrying that box. It, it can be anything. It can be anything. But I'm saying that to say this. I feel impressed to pray for some of you that have suffered heartbreak. And look like no matter what you do, you can't get away. You try to, you can't get over it. Something may happen years ago. You know, sometimes folk can hold stuff. Reminds me of a woman I knew, I knew of, I don't know personally, had been married. Her husband divorced her. She couldn't get over it. She couldn't get over it. The man went on, remarried, had kids, moved to California. He was doing fine. And she was still back where she was just mad, just upset, just still mad at him. The man that moved on with his life, girl, you need to do the same thing. But it was like there was a box. She couldn't get over it. She couldn't get no more relationships. She would never let herself fall in love again. She would never give another man a chance. Men tried to date her. She, she'd get mad and I don't want to be right there. You know, and she could never have a relationship because she was holding on to something and wouldn't let go. And you know, sometimes, brothers and sisters, you can hold on to stuff. Now, like I say, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to ask you to come. Because, again, I don't, I'm not going to get in your business. I'm going to say, oh, what was it? Did you, did you lose a man? What was it? Did, I, I, I ain't no such thing. Where you are, we're going to pray. Now, you know, you know, you know, you know. Some things you hold on to. Like I said, you know, I got people in my family now. You know, then fell out after somebody died. Usually that's what happens. <laughs> somebody in the family died. And you mad because you didn't get the money they said they were going to give you. Or you mad because they didn't put you on the program. I got folk in my family mad because they didn't get put on the program when my auntie died. They all wanted to say something. How come we don't get to say, well, yeah, yeah, I, was, yeah, I was her favorite niece. Why didn't I get to say that? I was you know, some of that stuff don't even make no sense. You don't even say nothing. Some folk fall out over the stupidest stuff. And like I say, sometimes you can carry that for so long until when you get down the road, you don't even remember what you're mad about. Some stuff you need to let go. But what am I saying? The box gets in the way. Like that play. The box. The, you're tripping over the box. You can't get out the room because the box is blocking you. You can't go no higher because the box is in the way. Some stuff you need to let go. And so I was saying that to you, and I'm getting ready to pray, but I'm going to be through. I'm going to be through. I'm getting ready to pray. Getting ready to pray. But God wants to release you. You've been heartbroken and look like you can't get over it. You've been heartbroken. Look like you just can't shake it loose. Lord, I want to move on with my life. But I'm just so heartbroken. I got no motivation for nothing. I got no motivation to go nowhere. I'm just resolved to my fate. No, you can be free. You can be free. You can be delivered. Heard somebody once say, don't let your past cancel your future. I got a sin. You know, I got a sin. I was telling them honestly, I got a sin. It's all in the rearview mirror. Some of the stuff is just in there. I mean, I could look up in the mirror and see it, but it's behind me. It's gone. Keep on driving. I ain't going to see it no more. Because it's so far behind me, and I'm not going to look it up. Hallelujah. Those heads are bowed. Those eyes are closed. I'm getting ready to pray. You know. You know. Now, Lord, as I lift these thy people up, you see what we've gone through. You see the heartbreak that many have carried. You see the grudges that we're holding on to some so long until we forgot what we're mad about. You see the feuds over stupid stuff, heartbreak, pain, self-inflicted, spiritual hurt. But Lord, deliver us today. Deliver the mind. Let healing begin to take place. Heal the heartbreak. Heal the resentment. Heal the bitterness. Heal the anger. Heal us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. 
that we might not leave this place like we came in. That we might not walk out the door like we walked in. But let healing take place. Come on, lift your hands half mass all of the auditorium. Lift your hands. Come on, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. And say, Lord, heal me from the inside out. Come on, y'all not praying. Y'all not praying. This is a prayer. Come on, say it again. Lord, heal me from the inside out. Heal my mind.